Hey guys, okay, welcome back. This is the third part of the video tutorial. In the second part, you know, we talked about how to do a configuration, basically, in, in, when, we, when we are dealing with the model first design. Okay, now we, we know once that, let's say now we, are, we have our model completed and we have our, you know, configuration is done, then when we run the schema, I'm not going to go and run the schema in this demo, of course, and I have uh, already did a videos on that one. Then when, when I do a code first migration, then basically all the database would be created for me. Now I have my databases, I'm kind of satisfied the way it is right now. Now next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to write my um, a data access layer, right? So okay, that data access layer, I have a little folder here. This, all my data access code would be residing inside that data access layer method of data inside that folder, okay? So let's look it into that one, how it is being structured. Uh, this is a very simple pattern that I, for the demo, of course, it might not be uh, perfectly ideal for the business, I mean, for a real application, a real life application, but, you know, it's very close, I think. Okay, let me go ahead and close all of them, so again, we can focus on that, because we look at into all of this, close all of this. Um, the very first thing I did, I created basically I repository. So basically, uh, this is my repository here, uh, my interface here, called I repository. Of course, you know when you write this one, I I don't so it I wrote a generic version of it so that I can use it for all of my method. And here is the entity, and all I'm saying, and I have some you know constraint here. Make sure this is referring to a class. This entity is a class, okay? And I expose some public API that 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 or the class that whoever would like to implement my interface. I need to save my instance, that's why I have the same method. I have a get all, get all the entities, and I have a method to delete and to update, and uh, get entity by ID. And this one is really cool method. It, this one is basically, I don't know, you guys have seen, this is this method comes from the MSDN magazine, and it is really, really cool feature, nice method. I will show you the why. This, ex this method is really cool uh, later. So, okay, once this is my interface, you know, it's very straightforward. M once my interface is defined, then I have a literal class called base repository here. This is an, of course, the abstract class, you know, so all of my uh, repository mo will be inheriting from, okay? So I have a class called a base repository of for T. Well, just like my interface, it is restriction for the class, and then of course it has a um, private field. Uh, it it has to know the application DB context, and it has to know the IDB set that I, I'm dealing with. And then, so this one, uh, as uh, you know, of course, using I'm using the 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 IOC dependency injection to inject this applica application DB context into the constructor of this class right here, and it is a protected. The, the the reason this math of this uh, constructor is protected because you know so that the, the my other classes inheriting classes can you know call the super it's called the base class directly be call, can call the base constructor I'll show that code later of course um, okay here is my uh, saving entities now it becomes pretty easy it's uh, basically I have an entity set. I don't really need this code, I was just seeing this and it, it just still remains here, but anyway. And I once I have my entity set, I'm basically go ahead and add this entity, that's a new entity that I'm providing to it, and then basically go ahead and save changes. This is not really uh, ideal yet, but because you know, in, in there is a something called, you need a pattern, you need a work pattern, design pattern that, so basically this same method shouldn't be residing right here, but just for the example right here, okay? In the retrieving get all is very simple. Here's entity set, convert that into two lists. I'm returning as i enumerable. Pretty easy. And of course, delete is I need all. I need to delete basically most of the time. Delete would be it's when a the I put it object instead of you know sometimes most of the time you know it, your data type might be long or or or. or bar char uh, or not bar char or GUI or whatever integer but it, just by having an object it covers all of them so the very first thing I did here is basically find the object by the given ID well, if it is found go ahead and remove it and save the changes that's 
pretty simple and just ma just make sure you know the these are the just by doing this is just very simple pattern of doing in GD framework okay this the, the state has been dotted some of the property has been modified that is what this code is doing after that changes okay this is get element by ID and this is you know you already saw that code very simple the implementation of this method is really really cool for now let me go ahead and close this one look at this method actually you know I, 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 I didn't write this method I grabbed this code this whole code from the, the MSD and one of the MSD and article but it's really cool uh, look at the signature of this one so by default this parameter is null first parameter is null means you know this is a new feature of uh, I don't know it's starting from visual you know dot net 3.5 or 4 is in we we didn't have you know CSAR we didn't have this feature BB people BB dot net people has always had that feature you know but but it's really cool and all of this parameter is nullable or you you know not really nullable means like if even if you do not pass any parameter it you it automatically you know take care of this one so by default doesn't include any any, any additional properties here so so the cool thing about this one is this is your filter of your property let's say you would like to do a search by a first name or if you're searching for application user maybe last name or maybe if you are searching for uh, I don't know maybe vendor you what would be you want to know by vendor by name the filter is there and this code is basically all this code is doing you you basically inside this one you will have you know uh, your comma separated properties name and so basically uh, you're just going to iterate over each of them on, on, on each iteration you're going to include those property into the query search results I played with this one it's a really really cool the query that it generates I use you know um, it's really neat and of course you know it also take care so if you order by clause it's all by it's also your funk this is neat and then basically return the list for the user this is really nice method okay that is my now we have um, let's look at our solution explorer you know now we have our interface and now I have abstract base class and now let's go ahead into uh, our vendor category repository this is very simple now the way I, I did is basically I have I have interface called iVendor category repository and that the interface in here you know implement in here is well <laughs> it's interface for so implement this i repository of vendor category okay and it doesn't have the reason let's say for some for some reason you need a very specialized kind of method and it's strictly for the vendor category repository you can put that method right here it's not going to be a generic that it could be used by other classes it could be very specific and you can right now it is empty with the, with the this is vendor category repository the same um, okay and then of course this is the implementation of vendor category repository a and you know because uh, we would like to inherit from base repository because most of our basic fraud operations are inside this class base repository right and then of course we would also like we would like to implement our interface so that uh, we it is always good idea to to program with the interface rather than with the concrete class and then it just like for the cat and and later on if we need to write a specialized method that go inside this repository interface and, and this is important in my design the way the way the design is done because into the default constructor now of course you know I need to know the DB context that would be provided by the by the con by the IOC container of course in this case unity and once this guy comes in I need to give that information to my um, my you know parent in this case this base repository has a you know uh, protected constructor that's what I'm doing basically hey when this saturated guy comes in my parent has to know that's uh, I'm providing that information to to the to the parent okay this is and so basically uh, later on let's say if I add my additional domain let's, let's say a point main with the vendor all those I will have a similar kind of repository and with the same pattern the now all of them basically kind of as you can see they follow the exactly the same pattern now let's look at into vendor repository 
exactly the same. You know, see, it is Bender and it has interface. I repository it inherit from the. Bender.